Hello there and welcome to a short video about self-pleasure. My name is Beth Wallace. I'm very often asked by people why I offer so many workshops, seminars, courses on self-pleasure. Why do I think it's so important, um, particularly to people in relationship? Surely everyone knows how to masturbate. Why bother teaching it? Um, people must be really sad to have to go to a self-pleasure workshop if they can't figure it out on their own. So I think for me the most important point that I want to communicate to you is that self-pleasure is not just about masturbation. Masturbation is not just about orgasm. An orgasm, the several seconds long, you know, rapid clenching of the muscles, intense peak pleasure experience, as we know it, is not the only orgasm that's available to us, that through growing in our understanding of how our body works, through expanding our experiences with our own body, we get to learn ways of deepening orgasm, extending it, prolonging it, uh, delaying it in order that it will be more intense when it does come pun intended. Um, and so for me a self-pleasure practice when I teach it is not about peak orgasm. It's about how can the body experience more pleasure. It's that simple. And nine times out of ten uh, people who explore their, their own bodies through a self-pleasure practice do experience Deeper, better, longer, stronger orgasms, if the self-pleasure practice is a sustained one. And so when I teach self-pleasure, I recommend that it's a minimum of 21 days uh, that people practice for. So, yes, of course, every almost every human being on the planet will, at some point before they get to their mid-teenage years, discover that they can touch their own genitals in a way that will produce a pleasurable experience. Now for everybody that's not an orgasm, um, there are you know, women who, who are unable to orgasm, who are anorgasmic. Um, there are men who ejaculate but don't orgasm at the same time. There are men who uh, don't orgasm at all, they just ejaculate. And the two can of course be separated into ejaculation and orgasm and men can learn how to bring those two together into the same experience at the same time or they can separate them. They can separate their ejaculation from their orgasm. Um, so yes, of course, almost every human being learns at some point that they can produce deeply uh, pleasurable feelings by touching their genitals. My experience when I talk to people and I ask them about their masturbation practice and I ask them how often they do it, uh, how they do it, what position they're in, uh, how long it lasts, in what order particular behaviours happen. Um, it becomes apparent to me that nine and a half people out of ten have a self-pleasure experience that is about having an orgasm. So they only start touching themselves when, when they want to have an orgasm. It is usually to alleviate sexual um, desire to usually to alleviate the pressure of intense arousal. Now, if we look at the potential for pleasure of a human body, a stress relieving orgasm or a stress relieving experience of masturbation is one fiftieth of what is actually possible in terms of pleasure that the human body can experience. We can have multiple orgasms, we can delay orgasm in order that when we do have it, it becomes more intense. Men can learn how to separate their ejaculation from their orgasm so that they can orgasm again and again without ejaculating and therefore prolonging and extending their experience of sexual pleasure. Women can learn how to orgasm for minutes on end, potentially uh, for as long as they want to orgasm for. The possibilities are, are quite endless, but uh, there are a lot more than most people are aware of. 
My experience in, in working with people also tells me that when we develop a intentional, a deliberate, a conscious self-pleasure practice, it makes us better lovers. Because we become much more aware of how our own body responds, what it needs, what it enjoys, we become more sensitive to other people and what they need and what they enjoy and how their bodies respond to touch and sensation. We can also tell our lovers what we want. We're much more able to say, this is what I like, this is how I like to be touched. If I want to orgasm, then this is what needs to happen. And we can extend and deepen our experience of pleasure. The more we explore, the more we play, the more we experiment, the more we experience. So, yes, of course, most people know how to produce an orgasm. But is that all that people want to experience from the potential uh, possibility of pleasure that the body can give? I hope not. Because, in my experience, it's, it's infinitely um, more rich than that. And so, in brief, there are some of the reasons why I teach self-pleasure practice um, and why I am so interested in encouraging people to explore the idea of a self-pleasure practice being way more than just rubbing an orgasm out in order to relieve some stress. That will be like the equivalent of going to a Michelin-starred restaurant and having one piece of bread when there's a whole kitchen behind those closed doors full of the most incredibly delicious delights. We just need to know how to order them. So I hope that's been useful. I hope it's been informative. And if I'm running a self-pleasure course at any point in the future, um, that you will feel interested in coming along to find out what it's all about. Thanks for watching.